What's going on guys, it's Michael MGF, and today I am so excited to finally be doing my highly anticipated showcase video to celebrate tonight's release of Spider-Man Homecoming. And for this video, I've got Spider-Man himself in his homemade costume, the Iron Man Mark 47 suit, and the Vulture. But you're probably wondering, where's the regular Stark Tech suit, Shocker, Tinkerer, Peter's friends, Aunt May, the rest of the movie's cast? Basically, I decided that these three were what was most important to me, and so I put everything into these guys. And also, before we get started, I gotta mention that LEGO did send out two of each of the Spider-Man Homecoming sets for me to give away, and so definitely drop a comment down below if you want one. And I also would have to advise, though, maybe don't scroll down all the way in doing so, because there are bound to be some spoilers. Anyway, with all that said, let's get started! Okay, so starting off with Spidey in his homemade suit, this was not always the suit I was going to make. At first, I was going to make the regular suit. However, I decided against that when Marvel released the second trailer for the film a few months ago and revealed that he would be in his homemade costume for most of the film instead. And I thought about it, and basically the homemade suit was the way to go because if I made the Stark Tech suit all over again, it would have looked just like this figure, just a little bit of a lighter blue, some more unique sets of lines here and there, and then just some wider lenses over the eyes. And while a version two would have been really cool, I also thought about what if I have to do it again for Infinity War next year if he doesn't really spend a lot of time, like say in an Iron Spider suit and he is in his Stark Tech suit again, and there's one thing I hate as a customizer, it's repetition, so I decided this would be the way to go to make this movie's unique costume, and of course that came in the form of the homemade suit, and I'm really happy that I went with that, and I ran with that decision because I'm super proud of the end result of this figure. And so the process of making it was basically, I started off with a regular red minifigure head, and then I took uh, the those, those hose pieces that LEGO uses on their fire extinguishers, and then I cut off the actual tips of those hoses, glued those onto the front of this head flat, and I don't even want to know how many of those pieces I had to cut before I finally got the right shape. Um, but then I filled in the excess space with Procreate. I added more depth to the front, also sculpting that on. And then I also went ahead and I used uh, little tiny bits of chain links, cut those in half and glued those to the tops of both goggles for those wires that you see. And then I painted them both up, added all the dots around each, the lenses with a metallic white. And I think they turned out looking awesome. And also the crease, like the line you see running through them, I had to paint that on after I had already done the goggles so getting a straight line through there was hard enough but then I realized dark red was really way way too noticeable and way too distracting and so I had the idea of going over that line with regular red and it really ended up simulating the exact effect that I wanted out of that crease line and then I also did the same on the back of the head so yeah then the hoodie is a regular hoodie piece nothing really special about it all painted in red however I did add my own uh, little zipper piece to the front of it and that was just a small tiny little chain link from some random piece of jewelry I got at Michael's. You'd be surprised how many great things you can get out of Michael's jewelry. Not gonna lie, it's pretty fantastic. And speaking of the little bits of Michael's jewelry, you know what's glued to the tips of these little cut up bits of Cape Madness fabric? More Michael's jewelry. Like seriously, I don't even know where these pieces came from. They were just from like some other random necklace I had. And then I'm like, those are exactly the size I need for those, you know, for the bits that I need to glue to the tips of these laces. And it ended up working out really well. Definitely tedious to glue all that together and then glue them into the inside of the hoodie there and then paint it over, make sure it was smooth enough so that it would not damage the torso here. And speaking of which, while we have this off, you can see the entire Spidey symbol all fully painted, every figure in the showcase and all of their details is all fully painted and uh, I also have some 3D pockets here, 3D zippers and speaking of more 3D elements you might notice the web shooters being the only thing going on in his arms because his arms are totally blank in the movie and so I just have basic sand blue Lego color for those parts. Um, you can see the web shooters are painted all the way around both of his wrists and I have 3D elements on both which were then also painted and then the web shooters you can kind of see in there. I'll bust off one of the arms really quick so you can just get a look at all of the detail going on on those web shooters. Definitely not an easy uh, designed to paint on to both of his wrists and then you know had a layer of sealant on top of that it was definitely pretty tedious but I'm super happy the way those turned out and also his boots these started off as a pair of double molded boots uh, from some random minifigure I think it's like a farmer or something that it came from um, but anyway yeah I took those and I painted my own regular red color onto them and then I went ahead and then I painted every little line you see and all the black detail on the very bottom edge of each boot and I'm really happy the way the boots turned out and the design work and how these lines continue from the like the 
the top of each foot all the way around. And like I said, I'm super happy with the way this figure turned out. And I'm really, I really think I made the right decision in making the homemade costume, blah, the homemade costume I can speak. And hopefully you agree. Oh, and I may or may not have taken a Superman hair piece and sanded the sides down a bit, painted that. And then I also may or may not have taken a Marty McFly head and then painted a black guy under one of the eyes and added weathering on top of that. And then I also might have just, uh, you know, also kept the other side because this face is just really fantastic for a Tom Holland Spider-Man. I'm, I'm telling you, Lego must have just been thinking ahead because uh, Marty McFly looks definitely a lot like Tom Holland in Lego. Next up, the Iron Man Mark 47 suit. My God, I have made so many Iron Man suits in my time. So while I want to say this one was challenging, well, I mean, it was. Painting those arms and legs was definitely no easy task. But you'll notice the torso armor I used here is actually an amazing armory uh, Mark VII torso piece based off of the very first Avengers film. And while I wish they were still open and that you could get these torso pieces, unfortunately, they shut down a long time ago. But I made sure to stock up on these before I did because they are a fantastic piece that creates such a really fantastic balance between Lego's Iron Man helmet and the skinnier torso. Um, um, so while it would be ideal for each torso armor to be based off of whatever Iron Man suit is, you know, it is that I'm working on at the time, unfortunately, unless you're a master sculptor like Sonder, like, you know, Brick Affliction, it's really just not an easy thing to do to sculpt Iron Man armor, right? So what I do instead is I take the Mark VII torso armor from Amazing Armory. And I, this is not new. I've done this on so many Iron Man suits in the past and it has worked so well just that it has here. And I basically do my best to go ahead and make and carry over however many uh, accurate details that I can from whatever Iron Man suit it is that I'm working on at the time. So in this case being the 47, I'm staring at the Hot Toys Mark 47 and then just painting on whatever I can from that suit onto this torso piece to basically mask and hide the fact that it is originally and it was originally designed after the Mark 7 from the first Avengers film. And so you can see all of that detail uh, all painted onto the front and onto the shoulder armor there, a little bit on the top in the form of some gold paint and then also on the back so you get the idea the helmet along with really the entirety of the suit does have the same uh, red highlights uh, running throughout the entire figure that I've had on the mark 45 and the mark 46 previously however this time around of course the design is a little bit different uh, on the front of the face mask because while a few of these lines on the top were there originally I had to erase the ones on the front and then paint on my own so these curved uh, thin lines running from the middle all the way to the upper uh, left and right corner were painted by me along with the little lines beneath those and then speaking of the face mask you will go ahead and remove it really quick so you can see inside I did paint the HUD for the Mark 47 as I've done with so many Iron Man suits in the past so this is the same design that I painted in here because I'm really happy uh, with the way it looks in each Iron Man suit that I've made over the years and so why fix something if it isn't broken right and so I painted that in to this Iron Man suit once again and we'll go ahead and remove the helmet along with the head and the torso armor just for now so that you can see see Secretly, this is not the Mark 47, and it is instead TC-14 at your service, but uh, ignoring the fact that uh, that torso was not brassoed off because I just simply ran out of time, you'll notice that I did paint on everything onto these arms and legs. I mean, everything you see on here, all fully painted. Not easy design work to paint onto minifigure arms and legs. Obviously, not only because of how tedious it is to paint those thin lines in all those specific ways, but of course, also because of the process of selection making sure I paint on all of the right details to make sure that everything I paint on is recognizable uh, to the Iron Man suit that I am making. And so doing all of that design work while getting all these lines perfectly straight and right, not easy, not an easy thing to do. And so you'll notice uh, that design does continue onto all four sides of the minifigure's legs and arms. And so yeah, um, that's pretty much it for the most part for the Mark 47. I think my favorite part of this whole Iron Man suit has obviously got to be the bulk of the detail on the arms, but also the front of the legs. That was definitely pretty tedious and time consuming to do. Uh, overall, one of the best Iron Man suits I think I have ever made. And uh, the Amazing Armory Mark 7 torso piece continues to work amazingly well for any Iron Man suit that I apply it to. Hopefully you guys agree. If you don't, that's okay. But there you go, the Mark 47. 
All right, here we go with the Vulture, the final figure that I know so many of you guys have been waiting to see. There's a lot to unpack here, so we're gonna just gonna start off with the figure itself first. Beginning with the helmet, originally it started off as a Lego collectible minifigure series, I don't care, uh, Galaxy Trooper helmet, and basically what I did was I sanded the front almost completely off, filled in the entire gap with Procreate, filled in this little gap on the top of the helmet, and then I sculpted all of the sections that you see on here. Basically, the visor was sculpted, the section beneath, the circular bits, one of which that is connected to this tube here, and then these sections on the sides of the helmet were actually done with rubber that I glued onto the sides of the helmet before, of course, painting the entire thing, and so it was definitely very challenging to get Vulture's helmet right, and I didn't know how it was going to look, but I'm ultimately really happy the way this turned out. And then this tube here was actually taking a little piece from a, uh, another necklace that I got at Michael's. Seriously, man, you go to Michael's, they have like all these little bits of jewelry like you just cut up necklaces and it's just great it's all of it is just like so many figure scale and it works so great because look at that texture that I've got on that tube now because I used that and I didn't you know attempt to sculpt it um, and that definitely worked out really well I think in this figure's favor and then the fur around his jacket the fur is uh, actually all fully sculpted and originally it kind of looked like a scarf and I wasn't happy with it and I ended up taking some nippers and making the bottom look a lot more jagged and I think it turned out looking really great especially with the shade that I added after a Citadel shade I think really did justice to this uh, whole fur sculpt and basically the way it works we're not talking about the wings just yet but the uh, the entire like fur piece is actually sculpted around a neck brace which is attached to the wings and then that goes on top of the torso and it worked out really really great so we're gonna go ahead and keep this off for the time being and you'll see just as to why that neck brace was so necessary for the vulture because then we put the helmet on and you can see he's kind of without a neck so uh, bending the torso up you'll notice that the torso and like the 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 entire figure is fairly simplistic, right? Except for the legs, which are definitely far from it. But the torso, you'll notice, does have a pretty minimal amount of detail because originally I did have this torso and uh, I found out this was inaccurate. The Marvel Legends figure is like a total lie because they based their figure off of concept art, which apparently was not used in the final version of the design because I had to completely repaint the torso and make it accurate by uh, pretty much just focusing mostly on whatever screen grabs I could find from the actual suit as opposed to the freaking inaccurate Marvel Legends figure. And so I have this little chain link on here as sort of like the zipper and then the strap here, all 3D, all fully painted detail that I think turned out looking really great. Some tiny tactical pockets on his arms, which I think add a really great level of depth that uh, his arms needed because of how much there, you know, how little there is going on uh, with his arms. And so also you'll notice I do have a pair of tiny tactical glove tops on his wrists as well. So his arms are definitely one big ad for uh, tiny tactical. Um, but yeah, then of course came the challenge of the legs, getting the legs right. Of course, I could do all the painted detail. I could do all of that uh, with ease, right? But then also the talons were the biggest challenge uh, next to the wings. And so the talons, I originally was going to use the general grievous legs like most people have done at this point, to, you know, from what I'm aware. But however, I decided that I could use rubber and basically carve out my own talons. I could carve out the armor on his legs. I could use little cut up bits of plant pieces for those bolts, glue it all together, and then it would look great once it was fully painted. And I think it definitely does. And you'll notice the talons on the back that I carved out, those are glued onto the insides of the legs just so they're more secure and can't break off, you know, should something happen. But one problem I ran into with the Vulture's talons were basically I glued them onto the sides of the feet at first and what happened was I thought I had more, I overestimated how much space I had in between a pair of minifigure legs and so that didn't work out so well when I tried to put the minifigure together, right? So then basically what I had to do was glue both talons, actually all four talons to the front of the uh, of, of both feet and it turned out, you know, it ended up working out really well, um, but it was definitely one hell of a scare when I realized that mistake that I had made. So, yeah, then aside from that, we can finally talk about the wings. Okay, so this is kind of an awkward angle, I'm not gonna lie. I guess I'll just put like a Spider-Man Homecoming logo up here to fill the space. Um, but going into the making of the Vulture's wings, I was obviously, it was an intimidating thing to think about before actually doing it. Um, but when I came to and I had to finally make the wings, I realized I had three options. 
I could take a ton of Lego pieces, a ton of angled plates, a ton of regular plates, cut sand and glue them together, glue little bits of katanas onto the edges to make, uh, you know, presentable wings that I thought could be as close as I could get with by, you know, by going through that process of doing all that modification, right? But then it came out in March that Mini Mates was going to, of course, have their own homecoming line. And I took the Mini Mates wings design and I looked at that and, I'm, and me and a friend of mine, Eric, who, who realized that these wings would probably be the best bet for when I would make this figure, realized that that was probably going to be the best option. But of course, I still entertained the next option, which was the third option of taking Marvel's or uh, Hasbro's uh, three and three quarter inch uh, vulture figure which also has a pretty nice set of wings which are definitely more scale accurate to how big the wings are in the movie but they were just a little too detailed they didn't have the like jetpack on the back um, that would work on a mini figure like these mini mates wings do and also it was just a little too much I didn't need the wings on my mini figure to be that big I didn't need them to be that massive I mean these were big enough and so I pretty much had an entire LDD file of all kinds of pieces I could use of course I didn't end up using it um, and then I ordered these mini mates wings and I also ordered the wings from that three and three quarter inch vulture figure and I ultimately ended up deciding to use these wings and you already saw how they are attached to the mini figure via the neck brace that I glued into place to have the fur sculpted around it um, but what I decided to do to make to pretty much make these wings as, I, as unique as I could as I could um, was take the already really nice looking wings that mini mates had with the figure and just give them my own paint job so this involved me painting everything you see on these wings, beginning with a base color of black and continuing with tons and tons of dark gray paint, gunmetal paint, olive green paint, just an absolute ton of paint work over the course of several extensive sessions. I mean, it must have been a total of at least nine hours of paint work by the time I was done with the wings. Of course, not uh, consistently. It was done over the course of, of several days, but it was definitely very time consuming. And you can see here's the back of the wings where all that detail continues in all four sides again, all being fully painted. I think uh, for the final session of painting the wings, I stayed up until like 4 a.m. just nonstop painting to get everything from this side where the jetpack is all the way to the far left corner all done because I had this wing done by like the third session of painting but on the fourth I just pretty much had to work all through the night to get these wings fully painted and it's something that was definitely a daunting task but I got through it because of course it is definitely a lot easier to paint all that detail on when it is all already there and that's another thing and another reason the Mini Mates wings won me over because all of that depth all of the detail was already there and that all of this detail I would have had to have individually sculpted every bit of had I used Lego pieces. And so I decided that I would, you know, I would set aside scale. I would set aside articulation and go for these really fantastic looking wings. And I think that they suit my minifigure of the Vulture perfectly. Hopefully you can agree. That is it for the Spider-Man Homecoming Showcase. And finally, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. That guy is still out there. I just gotta do this on my own. Do what on your own? I already got the bird guy. But... And the shocker guy. What? Oh, is this his movie? Sorry, kid. Wanna go fight some aliens? All right, guys, there you go. That is it for the Homecoming Showcase. It has been so awesome to finally make these figures and do this video for one of the summer's biggest movies. And so many of you have been so, so excited for not only this movie, but for my figures. And hopefully I lived up to your expectations. And if I did, or maybe if you found yourself inspired to make your own mini figures from the movie, then be sure to let me know by dropping this video a like below and or your opinion on these figures down in the comments. I mean, anything you like or dislike about them, seriously, guys, you and your feet feedback are the reason that I continue to work on minifigures each and every day. So with all that said, if you want to keep up with me in future projects such as Thor Ragnarok, Justice League, or the Savitar collab from The Flash Season 3 that I'm doing with Sonder, then definitely check out the social medias, the Twitter, the Facebook, the Instagram. It's all down there in the description below if you care. But aside from that, that is about it. I'm going to go see the movie. I've heard nothing but amazing things, and I really hope that this version of Spidey will finally stay stick and we'll have him in the MCU for years to come but on that note I'm gonna go because uh god this must be like the 45th take I'll see you guys later all right bye bye
So we probably won't be introducing Venom or other characters until... That's okay. We can make our own solo movies. But Yeah, we'll just get Tom Hardy or something. Fox won't need him for the claw guy. Well, Venom is a Spider-Man villain, and I don't think... Oh, we'll just get another guy to play Spidey Boy. But if you just wait for us to... We need the money, Kevin. Our cinematic universes are always successful anyway. Bunch of the Spider-Man... <laughs> Uh, and this one was no exception. Repaint and uh, f homecoming sets for me to give away. F <laughs> details and everything, you know, everything? What does that even mean? Stick it around for the whole thing. And if you enjoy this showcase video, video. If you're nothing without this suit, then you shouldn't have it. You take away my suit, and I'll tell Aunt May that I don't remember what happened last night before you drop me off. Was that too much? Casts of it. What I just. Fuck. Oh my god! He figures from the film by let me. I. Fuck. Oh my god!